This isn't just a cult. This is a cabal. This is an assemblage. This is Hurley Burley. This is disquiet. This is poetry. This is fiction. This is reality. This is Bedlam. This is a song. This is a story. This is, you see, there was a tree. I think it was a Norfolk pine. Wait, couldn't have been a Norfolk pine. It had leaves, for sure it had leaves. It was a big tree, strong too. Now that I think about it, it was probably some sort of oak, if I had to guess. Yes, I would say it was a mighty oak. So this tree, this oak tree, was at the top of a rocky cliff. Some of the branches hung over the sea that was at the base of the cliff. There were rocks down there, big jaggedy rocks along with some smaller jaggedy rocks. There was certain swirling water in between the foamy bubble sea. Since the sky up there was often all gray, shaded, gloomy, the water of the sea was also all gray, shaded, gloomy. Along with this tree, there was a man. I think his name was Eugene. It might have been just Gene. Or Gerald? Definitely not Jerry. Whatever, let's stick with Gene. He almost always wore a red and black buffalo plaid shirt with tan canvas pants that tucked into big woolly socks that he wore with his red-laced hiking boots. He was a sort of prototypical outdoorsy guy. Case trapper pocket knife, suspenders, wool hat that matched his socks. Of course, he had some rugged leather gloves that came in handy when he climbed trees. And Gene? Gene was a tree climber. Loved it. Couldn't get enough. Started early, maybe three or four, and was still doing it well into his fifties. So the man in the tree, the mighty oak tree, Gene's up in the tree, pretty far up, and he gets this idea. Brilliant idea, he thinks. Hell of a plan, really. It was fall, and the leaves were all colory, Gold, burnt, umber, crimson, amber, tan, and russet sepia colors barely hanging on to the tree when Gene started his climb. On his way up, a few, even a clump or so, would fall off. When he got to the top, which wasn't really a tippy top, but more like a roundy top, he sort of fixed himself by pressing his back against the last vertical branch and then braced more with his feet on a Y limb. He was pretty secure up there because it was a mighty oak. He took a moment there was a view. Looking past the jaggedy rocks, there was the sea. It was all gray shaded gloomy and there was no sun to be seen. Tumbly, wanting to be violent clouds with variations of chalky death charcoal highlighted their shapes. Below the sky were tumbly, wanting to be violent frothy swells with white intonations of ominous doom. The waves hit the jaggedy rocks with a smack and a slap. Gene loved it. Sharp, brittle sounds with a -a rat-a-tap-tap. Gene's little rest in the tree was actually a ways out over the sea rather than over the land of the cliff. He was resting right above the jaggedy rocks. He studied the rocks with his eyes and his heart. One little gold leaf tumbled past his cheek, and he watched it float, all zigzag corkscrew, down to the spot of the frothy foam of the bubbly sea. It floated and dived and rose again, only to finally sink down. That was when Gene completed his epiphany. He had rose to the top, and now he shook all the leaves. He used both of his arms, and he shook mightily. He pumped with his feet for a shaking tree spree, and all of the leaves fell to the opening sea. The opening sea with its jaggedy rocks and foamy bubble froth had a hell of a curse. In fact, you could say it was the ultimate worst. The leaves hit the sea with a blip and a blap, soft little sounds like a cat in a nap. But now these leaves were plentiful and they formed an association. The mighty oak tree sea leaf federation. They hung on to each other against the swell variations and the violent frothy undulations. 
Together, the leaves rode the sea, and the sea held the leaves. Actually, there was never a thought to not just agree. The sea was the leaves, and the leaves were the sea. Both of them one, just supplying their needs. As Jean sat in the tree for a few hours more, eating an apple he had bought at the store, he watched the tide come in and then move away slow. At first the mighty oak tree sea leaf federation was a goldy, burnt, umber, crimson, amber, tannin, russet, sepia-colored nation. They all clung together, and the sea helped them ride on the waves. Jean watched them all as they moved far away. One step towards him, and then a two-step ballet. The farther they went, the less Jean could see. Eventually they too were a gray shaded gloomy on the violent swell sea. Jean had seen it before, and he knew this was no end. On and on this story would go. On and on this story would go. Jean thought this again on his descent. With each passing limb he gave a soft pat to his friend. On and on this story would go, until the tree and the man and the tree leaves now the leaves of the sea begin to forget, then they might disagree. Jean leapt the last few feet down, to the land of the cliff near his friend the big tree. He took the apple core out and he threw it into the sea. And on and on the story will go. There was a tree, and there was a man, and the man and tree had a hell of a plan. He rose to the top and shook all the leaves, and all the leaves fell to the open sea, and the open sea had a hell of a curse. The curse was back, the ultimate worst, the ultimate worst that there ever could be. So the man and the tree shook all the leaves, the leaves hit the sea with a blip and a blap. Soft little sounds like a cat in a nap. The leaves were the sea, and the seeds held the leaves. There was never a thought to not disagree. The sea was the leaves, and the leaves were the sea. Both of the ones applying their needs. And on and on the story will go to the tree. And the man and the leaves of the tree and the leaves of the sea begin to forget and then disagree. And on and on the story will go. There was a tree and there was a man. And the man and the tree had a hell of a plan. He rose to the top and shook all the leaves and all the leaves fell to the opening sea. And the opening sea had a hell of a curse. The curse was in fact the ultimate worst, the ultimate worst that there ever could be. So the man and the tree shook all the leaves and the leaves of the sea with a blip and a blap. Soft all sounds like a cat in a nap. The leaves were the seas, the sea held the leaves. There was never a thought to not just agree. The sea was the leaves, the leaves were the sea. Both of them one supplying their needs. And on and on the story will go to the tree and the man and the leaves of the tree. And the leaves of the sea begin to forget and then disagree. And on and on the story will go. The story will go. On and on the story will go. To forget and then disagree and on and on the story will go and on and on the story will go and on and on the story will go and on and on you have been listening to this isn't just a cult a work of real fiction this episode was written narrated and produced by me bjorn orange the catalyst for this episode was the song Leaves of the Sea by the Halcyon Brothers. It is from their album We Might Fall Apart, which you can find on Bandcamp, Spotify, Deezer, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and just about any other place you get your listening pleasures. Check out the show notes for some links. We also heard a couple of solo tracks from occasional Halcyon Brothers guitarist Dorje Lamb, Everything changes and walking around boulders looking like animals and faces. You can find his work on Bandcamp and SoundCloud as well. We'll put some links in the show notes. Learn about this art collective at thisisn'tjustacult.com. This Isn't Just a Cult is a production of Higgins Turner Higgins, LLC. Subscribing and reviews are greatly appreciated. Or, you know what? This is interesting. According to a recent survey of over 105,000 neurologists, geologists, 
and readers of spicy pulp fiction, 90% of the average majority earning plus or minus 6% of the main example with a quality service mindset regarding statistics and probabilities indicated that they had a strong to possibly super strong attraction to words, phrases, concepts, and conglomerations of the aforenoted. That is kind of staggering, right? I mean, who knew? Not me. I'll tell you that. Maybe you did, but come on. You're pretty informed and aware of these trends before they hit the mainstream. You are a trendsetter, as they say. A tastemaker. And with such a charming personality, wit, and allure, people just tend to listen to you. Face it, they want to be like you. So, do the right thing. Tell them about this podcast. You can't keep all this goodness to yourself. Great. Thanks. It's appreciated. Okay, that about sums up this episode. Have a good one. Remember, only you can prevent this world from tasting like coal and diesel fuel. Thanks for listening. Available now from Do Tell Records, the latest from the Halcyon Brothers, their new album, We Might Fall Apart. All tracks recorded by the original artist. You'll hear such hot tracks as Leaves of the Sea, and the, leaves of the, the House Burned Down, <laughs> Suntastic Weekends. My weekend was just suntastic. Critics have spoken. I'm afraid I just wasn't a fan of this song. A wee bit too commercial for my... This is an exclusive offer. The new album from the Halcyon Brothers. We Might Fall Apart. A cassette LP for the price of only 27 minutes of your precious time. Call now to receive your copy of We Might Fall Apart from the Halcyon Brothers on cassette or LP. Only available from Dutel Records. Some of the songs featured in this ad are not actually on the album We Might Fall Apart, but were included for promotional purposes only.